Rodman leaves. <laughs> How's it going, Rodman? Good evening, Eric. One of these days, we're going to figure that out. One of these days, man. You hit the button. You think it's going to happen. Nothing happens. But it is what it is. We are back for another episode of the Exhale Podcast live here tonight. Let's go ahead and turn this off. That's enough of that. Boom. We're in. We're in like sin, baby. (laughs) So tonight, we're going to talk about the five best spearfishing masks that Rodman and I have pulled from the shop at Florida Freedivers tonight to show you. You're going to see all of it today here on the XL Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Before we get into it, we'd like to thank our sponsors as always. One of them being Ballast Freediving. You can check them out on Instagram at Ballast Freediving. They've got some awesome gear. You can find their gear at one of our other sponsors, Florida Freedivers. They're a really cool retail location. Find all your freediving and spearfishing needs in one spot. Check out their website, flfreedivers.com, or you can go visit them at their store location in North Palm Beach. Yeah, that was the best one I think I've ever done. That sounded Bam. good. That did sound sounded like a real commercial. There you go. <laughs> um, and Teach Me to Freedive. They teach FII-sanctioned freediving courses through Florida Freedivers. Um, you can check them out at Teach Me to Freedive if you want to take a cool freediving course. There you go. Spearfishing, the level two, which you're about to do. Level one, level two, yep. In the Bahamas. There we go, man. It can't nice. be a Dean's Blue Hole. That is, is the be a fun trip. Pretty much the epitome of freediving locations. There you go. It is crazy, man. It goes from like beach, dry beach, and it's like four feet. You take three steps and it's like four feet deep. Take another three steps, it's like six feet deep. Take another three steps and it's like 600 feet deep. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It is just straight off the beach. It's cool though, and I'm looking forward to going. Um, hopefully, I'll be getting some good video from there. We'll see. Nice. We'll throw it up on the on the YouTube channel. We'll see what happens. Um, speaking of throwing up videos on the YouTube channel as well, we just did a pretty fun impromptu short dive competition called the Exhale Podcast Short Dive Short Dive Showdown. Um, yeah. it, and <laughs> it, was it was fun. A, it was a dry run. It was a lot of fun. We had a ton of fun. It was a dry run. Oh, you know what? We might actually let's turn that loom cube off because now you got a microphone shadow on your face. Boom. There we go. Um, we had a ton of fun, and hopefully, my plan is to kind of put together a real shore diving tournament in the future. I think that I think that would be awesome. Uh, the location that we did it at, so the south the south jetty of the Palm, of the Palm Beach Inlet, that was an awesome location. I I think in the future, if we were going to do it for real, we might pick a different location. Yeah, that probably having twenty people at the Palm Beach Inlet might not be the best no. idea. And just zero parking. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. Is the that hard, too. That's the hardest part right there. But the whole point of the tournament was we weren't necessarily going out and trying to find, you know, all the the top picks for fish, you know? No, and, and we weren't trying to do it to scout for a, a tournament or big, big, do a bigger tournament. It was literally our f- uh, five buddies yep. got together and we're like, you know what? I bet you I can shoot more beach fish than you do. And then from there, it escalated pretty quickly. Quick, All of a sudden, rules started getting thrown around. <laughs> and we're like, dang, this is kind of a tournament. Typed up a paper with a picture on it and everything. It was. Uh, you know if you got a header going that it's <laughs> legitimate. <laughs> it got a little out of hand. It got a little out of hand. We, pa- we made rules. And, yeah. uh, and then loose, more like guidelines than rules. There we go. But uh, we went out there. Video to come. Had an absolute great time. The, Ryan, Ryan Myers approved rules as well. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. Ryan was at the shop when, when we were planning it, and he was literally flying to Fiji that morning that he was at the shop. He's like, oh, man, I wish I wasn't flying to Fiji. This sounds like so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. It was such a good time because you, no one's going for glory. You know, everyone was just going to have fun. Uh, a Bermuda Chub got shot. A Spot got shot. I think a few Bermuda Chubs got shot. It, I I shot, I think it was a blue runner. It was like a blue know. runner and a goggle. I had a baby. I am, you'll see it in the video. <laughs> but uh, it was a blast. <laughs> I haven't had that much fun spearfishing. A goggle Every, runner? <laughs> everybody shot something, and it was uh, fun was had by all, for sure. It was cool. So we got a, a bunch of video. We kind of filmed it um, as if we were filming like a vlog or something like that. Yeah. So I'm going to be throwing that footage up soon. I'm going to try and get it all together tonight and... If I get it together tonight, I might put it up or um, I might schedule it for release while I'm out on vacation. There you go, man. All right. To the point. Your Omer alien mask sucks. 
Yeah, and here's why. That should have been the title <laughs> of the video. That should have. Um, and no, so before we really start showing the mass that we have here, I'll give you a quick little... There they are, right there in the corner. Um, before we start talking about these masks that we've picked and why we picked these masks, the most important thing to remember is the best spearfishing mask in the world is the one that fits you the best. Yeah. Um, so these ones we've picked, that doesn't... These that we pick these because they have features that make them really, really good masks and because they're masks that we personally like. Um, but if none of these masks fit you, then that's not the best mask for you. Um, if the Omer alien fits you the best out of all the masks, which I don't know why it would, because I hate that mask. If you're Asian, they fit Asians extremely well. All right. You need that like Asian bone structure. There you go. My Neanderthal bone structure, not, <laughs> not, it does not work for that. Doesn't work. Bryce, our, we got a buddy, a dive buddy named Bryce. It does not fit for, he swears by it. It does not work for him. <laughs> if you're coming that's, up with two big red divots in your face, yeah. that's not, that's not what you're if looking for. If it looks for. like somebody did a burnout on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's what bad. you want. I, but that being said, I think before we get into the five, we'll both talk on if I'm buying a new mask, what am I looking for in a mask? Like, what are the general features that narrowed it down to this five that you see before you? Yeah. And it's not that these are the best five at Florida Freedivers. These are the best five freediving masks in the industry. If you don't see the mask that you're wearing, it's because you're not. You don't have the best mask. <laughs> these five. Yeah. And honestly, are the best five. out of these masks, they cover a pretty wide range of fit. For sure. Um, For sure. I think they honestly go pretty much all the way across the board as far as fit goes. Nice. And in this style of mask. So you know? I think that's a great way to a great way to jump into it is with with fit. And so I am step one, take the glasses off, right? I am can't wear it with glasses on. What I see a lot of people do is they grab the first mask off the wall. You know, you gotta start somewhere. Uh, this isn't enthusiastic i like it nice they <laughs> grab the first mask off the wall and what do they do they slam it onto their face as hard as they can and let's well that was me oh, oh now we're on you oh, let's nice. show us again so you slam it on your face suck it really hard to your nose <laughs> and you're like oh it fits well maybe it fits maybe it doesn't florida freedivers has roughly 100 masks depending on which ones are on sale which ones are sold out all right but you you walk in there Chances are there's going to be about 100 masks mm. on the wall. I have 100 and different masks. The cheapest mask is not the best mask. Necessarily. I, it goes back to fit, though. If the, the Well, yeah, we, we do have one mask in here that's pretty budget-friendly. Budget-friendly. I You want one that, that fits for you, as long as it has certain features. And we'll go through those through those features. Cool. If I So I put it, I push it onto my face and breathe in. It's sealed. Does that mean this mask fits me? Not necessarily. What I want to do is gently put it against my face. If I can just rest it on my face and then breathe in, well, then it's going to fit me. All the masks today are going to pretty much fit my face just because they're the five best masks for spearfishing. But, um, but let's say I didn't really have a good fit on my face and... I don't know if you can hear me breathing in, but if you got any... Oh, I heard it. Oh, nice. Um, if you get any air into that mask at all when you're breathing in, that means that there's going to be leaks. And I have it... The key with that is to gently rest it on your face. You want the form of this to fit the form of your face, right? If you have to pull the mask apart and shove it on your face really hard, that's not great. The one... That being said, if you have a mustache... Ooh, there you go. That being said, if you have a mustache, you might get air coming in underneath the this nose piece right here. Mm -hmm. Silicone grease, and Vaseline. Even, I'll show you this. Even a mustache at these scrandy levels, <laughs> <laughs> which border, I don't even wouldn't even consider it a mustache. I get leakage just from that, the just from that amount of uh, scrandiness. There you go. Well, I'm at No Shave November, and we are seven days in. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've been running into some issues as well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't grow facial hair to save my life. But uh, 
I am. So luckily, I don't have to worry about it. We sell mask seal. You can buy like commercial mask seal, which is nice because it comes with an applicator. It's basically mm. chapstick. But a tub of Vaseline, silicone grease, anything like that is going to uh, seal that up. A bunch of a bunch of snot, you know, is gonna is gonna seal that up. There you go. I am. So you want to, but going back to what it, the first step, lightly fit against your face, and breathe in should completely seal completely seal when you breathe in. The second step, most people get that step. Everybody skips the second step. This is the money maker. You put it against your face. You lightly breathe in, lightly, and then you press on the frame. Can you see here that there's a little bit of give? Look at that movement. <laughs> that movement, right? So let's say I took a mask. My cells are gonna kind of fit, but this one might might be the worst. And if I suck it really hard, I can do it. But if I press on the frame with this one, and let's say this was a one lens mask, I'd be pressing just in the middle of that glass. There'd be no movement there. It's already resting against my face. In the store on land, that feels completely fine. But once I go diving, once you build enough that pressure, you dive to 66 feet. That's 45 pounds of PSI. So every square inch on that mask is 45 pounds of pressure. That's a big plate weight from the gym pressing down on that mask. That's going to give you a nasty headache. That's uh, how you so eloquently put it, a burnout mark on your face. <laughs> I, so that, that's what you want. So that's, that's the first key feature and really the most important feature when it, when it comes to it. Yeah. The next spot, next spot that I like to look for is the skirt. So the skirt is uh, the rubber part uh, that goes against your face. And I'm going to use rubber in quotations because what you want is not the rubber. You don't want, a, you don't want natural rubber to be in there, nor do you want PVC. You want a hundred percent silicone, and what you don't want freaking rubber anyway, or PVC because both of those things break down in UV and heat, and, and salt water for sure. And what's especially rubber, um, and what are you using this for? To yeah. go f spear fishing in salt water On in the sun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it continues to vulcanize as well. So even if you kept it in the closet, it's gonna keep getting harder and harder, and you'll notice that it will start to get kind of ripples and stuff that's going to affect the seal uh, even in under perfect conditions yeah here when you buy your mask it should say 100 percent silicone on the box that is a selling feature so most companies they are going to um uh, advertise that right they want to they want to show that off another key part to the skirt once you have that 100 percent silicone is that it's a solid color you can notice all the masks that we have today are black Although I, my personal preference is for black, what is mandatory is that it is not clear. For the same reason there's no clear eye cups on binoculars or clear eye cups on cameras, imagine looking into a car on a sunny day. You have to kind of cup your eyes, right, to look through the glass. Well, the same thing, especially if you're free diving on, or snorkeling and you're on the surface, light is going to come through the, so the skirt and then reflect on the glass. And now you're looking at that glare instead of looking through it at all the cool fish. Yeah, and uh, another thing to mention there is that, so a lot of people like the clear skirts be because it lets light in and because it makes them feel less claustrophobic or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you have like good peripheral vision on the mask to start with, you're not gonna run into that issue. Um, but also people think that they can see through that clear skirt. That's not the case, man. You can't. Is not absolutely you, all you can see is blobs at, moving at, at best. best. <laughs> at best, it's just not. It's not a thing. If you dive with a clear mask and then a black skirt mask back to back, you you'll instantly go to a to a uh, a solid skirted mask. Yeah, and it can be blue or green or brown. I've seen we have white ones in the shop. I'm not overly concerned with what color. The white is a little distracting for me because it's su it's super bright in my peripheral yeah. vision. And you can get a, a little bit of the same effect from light coming into the lenses and actually reflecting off the white skirt mm -hmm. on the inside. Um, totally. And I don't think it gives you as much glare per se, but it definitely yeah. reflects into your the balls of your eyes. Nice, <laughs> nice. I am all right. So I think that that is it uh, for skirts. So silicone, solid color. Preferably black, but definitely not clear. Yeah. Sweet. All good points. Not, not rubber, not silicone. 
I all valid points. The next thing that I look for. So we've gotten fit. We've gotten skirt. The neck next. So we got skirt. We got fit. The next thing that I look for is the lenses. And some people have a preference over one lens or two. So we have I um, five masks up here. The five best masks up here. And they all are two lens masks. That's a good point. Does that mean that one lens masks are bad? No. If you see if you uh, subscribe, you're gonna see videos of me diving, including the the sh uh, shore dive showdown mm -hmm. where I'm diving a one lens mask. The XL podcast shore dive showdown. There you go. <laughs> I'm I don't have a preference. I don't have a preference. I dive the Omer Apnea because they did not have this mask when I bought that Omer Apnea. As soon as that Omer Apnea dies, I'm going to get this one. So one thing that I do find funny is that out of the five masks that we've chosen here, none of them are either of the masks, masks that we dive with. Yeah. Well, it's because they're bringing out new stuff. And Diva's <laughs> next week, so they're going to have a whole crop of new. Yeah, of that's the a new good new. point. We might have to remake this video. As of right now, 11, 7, 18. <laughs> These are the five best spearfishing masks in the world. Yes. I. Um, all right, so one lens or two lens. I do not care. However, I do care about the material. I do not like plastic lenses. Mm. Why is that? Ooh, good question. <laughs> Well, there's two reasons. One, the plastic lenses in maybe the Aqualung Sierra, for example, anytime you see a radius on a mask, so any kind of bend on the lens, uh, you're going to get much better peripheral vision. That Aqualung Sierra has amazing peripheral vision. It does in one direction, not the other direction. However, however, it scratches extremely easily. And if you are do as I do and not do as I say... You are chucking your mask back into your mask bag with all sorts of clutter and dive knives and weights and fins and and it's prone to getting scratched. Yeah. If you are the kind of person that put takes your snorkel off and puts your mask back in the mask box and gently puts that back into the bag, well then great, maybe you can get away for two seasons with the Aqualung Sierra. Because even after two seasons, those plastic lenses, you're gonna leave it out in the sun once between those two seasons. And what's going to happen to those lenses? They're going to pop out. Yep. And uh, the perfect example, that because the, the Aqualung Sfera is a good mask. It's a, it's a really good free diving mask. It's, a, it's, a, it's so good, in fact, that in the PowerPoint slide that I teach off of for FI, every single person, except for the blackout videos of the, the person blacking out in the blackout videos, <laughs> is wearing the Aqualung Sfera. Like, I don't know what the chances of that is. <laughs> But the only two masks not in that PowerPoint are of people blocking out. So you're telling me I need to get a Sphera for my level two course? I would want the lowest volume mask. So if you're taking the level two course, it goes to 132 feet. Yeah. That's that's legitimately deep. That's that's by anyone's standards, you're that's deep diving. I you I took it with a Cressy Matrix, which is a large volume mask. I would empty my mouth fill into that mask, mm. which is a freaking bummer. I am. I would go the lowest volume mask there, that, that isn't gonna that still fits you, right? The key is fit. Yep. If the Jacques Cousteau round mask is the only mask that fits you in the level two course, use the Jacques Cousteau level two mask. There, there are some tricks to actually reduce the volume of your mask, regardless of the mask. If you're really like getting hardcore into the free diving, there are some tricks to that. We're not going to get into that today. Um, but what I was going to say about the the Sfera, it's a great free diving mask. You can dive super super deep with that mask because of how low low volume it is and because it's flexible. But like Jonathan, the um, the owner at Florida Free Divers, he spear fishes in the Sfera and he goes through like four masks a year. I'll bet you. I mean, if you, so there's like a back closet full of gear that we, we get to use at Florida Freedivers and, um, there's like some masks back there. I mean, maybe a total of eight masks and seven of them are like <laughs> busted spheres from Jonathan. <laughs> so that's, that's not a good sign. Not they, a good spear. They are mask. cheaper. There are, they are in the range of a budget mask. I'd say they're the high range they're of still, a budget. They're still like 45 or 46 yeah, bucks. Yeah. yeah. Which is I, not. 
I'd say anything for under forty nine bucks, you're in the budget. At fifty, you're into like the mid range. That's fair, math. but it's it's on the verge. I wouldn't want to buy a bunch of them in succession. No. And you can you can blow out a sphere mask in one trip. Yeah. Oh, for easily. Sure. So you get a big scratch across the front of it. It's to toast. Me, it's toast. Yeah. Yeah. I um, all right. So that's lenses. One thing that we didn't talk about. Tint tinted lenses tinted lens masks. Yes. I. Do not like tinted lens masks. Yeah, so, and we do have one up here. We only grabbed that one because the non tinted version. It's this one there. Um, the non tinted version was not within our arm reach. <laughs> yeah. I'm, and it's not to say that tinted lens is the end of the world, but I will give you my uh, two reasons why I like a clear mask, a clear tinted lens. Hit me. Clear lens. Mm -hmm. First one is safety predominantly safety i want my buddy to be able to see my eyes if he looks at my mask and it's n and it's nothing but eyeball in there that's not a good sign right that means I'm, I'm panicking also i could my eyes rolling back in the back of my head anything like that i want my dive buddy to be able to see my eyes not only on my on my dive but when i'm doing my recovery breaths anything like that i want my dive buddy to see my eyes is that going to move anybody no because only Especially for beginners, no, and I was the same way. Safety is third, you know. Safety is third. I, but I like it way more for spearfishing. So, although I try to spearfish on beautiful sunny days in <laughs> crystal clear water, that is not always the case. That was not the case in the short I've showdown. No, no, it was yeah. windy, murky, and overcast. Exactly. I want as much light getting to my eyes as possible. I want to be able to see contrast, see colors. I don't want to block any light. Mm. The more light that gets to my eyes, the better. Even when you're deep diving as well, um, let's say you're spearfishing in you know, 60 feet or even like 40 feet plus, the bottom gets darker. I want to be able For to sure. see as much light from that reflecting off the bottom getting to my eyes as possible. Especially if you're hunting in and around ledges or in that kind of thing, like seeing underneath the ledge with tinted lenses at... 60 to 80 feet is pretty much impossible unless your face is inside the ledge and you have a flashlight yeah, yeah. or you have a flashlight rather i'll say six to eight inches and especially if it's crystal clear water on a beautiful sunny day mm. and diving in the bahamas for example that sand is bright white and that sun is just reflecting your eyes your pupils are freaking pinpoints yeah super super tiny and then you go to look under a dark ledge well, that's like putting sunglasses on to walk inside. Yeah, it's just like a video camera going from out, like trying to look through a window from inside to outside. You either get a dark room with a good outside or you get a bright window with a good room. Yeah. Um, your eyes work the same way. They have like an exposure level and they can't do multiple exposures. <laughs> exactly. So I want, I want no HDR. On no eyeballs. HDR on your eyeballs. I want clear lenses for that. Being able to see on murky days and being able to see under ledges on bright sunny days, yep. it makes a huge, uh, it makes a huge difference. The only pushback I get on that, and where I'll give up a little ground, is they look freaking cool on Instagram. They do, man. You want to get sponsored? The tinted lenses are where it's at. Or, I mean, we've already been roasting Bryce on this episode. Bryce dives like the darkest mass that you can get your hands on. It's like that rife sunglasses tint, you yeah. know. <laughs> I, that tint is insane. It's like a 5% car window tint. It's limo tint. Yeah. It, what, so they mirrored the, it's mirror on the front and it's mirror on the inside. It's double tint. It's crazy. I'm, it's, it's it, insane. it is so dark. It is so dark. If you put it on inside, you, you have a hard time seeing. I don't know how he dives in that, especially kids diving up in like, um, New England, yeah. you know, <laughs> in like five foot viz. Forget it. Boy Whatever. Island. I'm Bricey boy. We love you. Yeah. So clear lenses. Um, all right. The next thing volume. So when I'm, when I say volume, what, what do I mean? If I took, these are all pretty freaking low volume masks, but let's say I took this mask, the Perla and I poured it into, I filled it up with water and I poured it into the UPA, I, you, UPM1. UPM1. Umberto Pelizari. I am the I the Omer would overflow. Right? When I put it against my face, there's more air trapped between the mask and my face in the Cressy Perla 
then I uh, in the Omer. All right. And while so volume definitely plays a role in all yes. free diving, um, really plays a role in deep free diving. However, even like 40 to 60 foot spear fishing, which is kind of like that bread and butter zone of most people who are really into the sport, right? Um, it definitely makes a difference. If you are putting air into your mask, more air into your mask than another mask or less air mm -hmm. into your mask than another mask, that absolutely, absolutely makes a difference. That's that much more oxygen that is not in your lungs. That's that much more air that you can't equalize your sinuses and um, ears with and all that kind of thing. So Let's, it definitely makes a difference. So it's crazy when you actually put numbers to it. Let's say this mask is 200 milliliters okay. of air. And I dive down to 66 feet. That means that the pressure has tripled. From the atmosphere, from 33, now I'm at 66. That means this mask is now holding the equivalent of 600 milliliters of air at 66 feet. Which means from my lungs, I've had to take 400 milliliters of air and put it into the mask. That's half a wine bottle. Unless you're my wife and you buy wine in boxes, then it's way less. But Or gallons. Or gallons. <laughs> it's uh, mostly the boxes. But uh, I... 400 milliliters at 66 feet is a lot. If you go to 132 feet for your level two, that's uh, 800, the equivalent of 800 milliliters for a 200 milliliter mask. That's a lot of air. It's a, more than a wine bottle from your lungs. That's a significant amount of air out of your lungs. Yeah. Your lungs don't hold a ton of air to start with. <laughs> yeah. And that's why people I uh, geek out on the low volume. I will say free diving has been blowing up recently over the, over the recent years. And, Companies are trying to cash in on it. So they have done some crazy things, whether that's extra long 100 centimeter fins or stupidly crazy low volume masks. The, this, the predecessor to this mask, which was the Omer Zero. Which one? It, this is, this uh, one. am yes, I in the right camera? One. Oh, you were. All right. So what, what, I'm going to hold it right here. I'm good? You're good. Okay, cool. I am, the predecessor to this was the Omer Zero. Maybe the worst free diving spear, maybe the worst spear fishing mask I ever got my hands on. It was trash. It was trash. Everything about it was bad. This mask looks so similar to it, but I love this mask. This it's mask, exactly the same mask. What plus or minus some features, but, but it's they, pretty much the same but mask. But they tweaked the frame enough to where the Omer Zero, it was super low volume, but they sacrificed the fit. It wouldn't fit my Neanderthal crow magnon brow. That thing wouldn't fit anybody. Pretty much anybody. Anybody. It's only one person I know that dove, dove with that mask. Yeah. <laughs> and they probably hated every minute of it. Where this mask, it looks so similar. It is super low volume, but it actually fits. And it's, it's very rare. But that's the most important part. Instead of that uh, Ormer Zero, I dove with the Cressy Matrix forever. I love that mask. And that's like... A medium at best volume mask. Yeah, I but compared I, to these, it's definitely oh, it's a it's high a, it's volume a mask. different class yeah. of mask than than these ones for sure. But it fit me really well, so I was I was fine to give that up. And although it makes a difference, I think it's not until you hit that sixty six foot mark, that twenty meter mark, where, where for sure it, you really gotta like, all right, now it's time to start paying attention to. And it. The, because that's the depth that you're gonna start noticing the feeling of negative pressure in your lungs. Yeah. Right. So if you're taking more air out of your lungs at 66 feet, that means that's that much more discomfort. That's that much more flex you're going to have in your diaphragm. For sure. And that's where you, that's where you're going to feel the discomfort. For sure. I am. I will say to you that, uh, I am, that doesn't mean that you don't have to equalize your mask shallower than 66 feet. You definitely do. You definitely do. You have to keep your mask equalized. You definitely do. Um, and on the way up, though, you equalize that mask. You get to breathe that air back in. Keep your mask tight on your face as you ascend. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, that's a almost a learned skill. Not everybody is oh, good at doing that. You for, know, Absolutely. That's, it takes a while to figure out how to actually do go, it. Go through the course. Yeah. You know? I focus on keeping my mask loose on my face on the way down and super tight on my face on the way up. Yep. Um, all right, let's go through let's go through the masks. Sure. So we've got five masks that we just picked out. Yep. The right five best in the world. Five best in the world. 
Um, let's start for lowest price point, the highest price point, or do you want to start in the front? Let's start in the front. Highest to lowest? Yeah. All right. I don't know if that's the exact order, but <clears throat> this is probably the highest price mask. This is one nineteen ninety five. Call it one twenty. Yeah, and that's that's for the mirrored version, which is what mirror. we've we're holding here, and you can see it's a pretty light mirror. Yeah, let me switch you over. You're not in the camera. Can I see it? Okay. How about now? There. Up. Can you see the mirror? Up. Up. There you go. There, there it you is. go. <laughs> there it is. So I, what I do, if I was going to get a tinted lens mask, this is probably the mask that I would get. Not only does it uh, fit very well, fits a wide variety of faces very well. The tint is, uh, is very light on it. I am um, one thing about tint that not only does it look cool and insane, that's probably it. The only benefit to it. I see people say that fish tune into people's eyes and that's why they want the tint. And I know if we don't address it, someone's going to bring it up in the comment section. The fish definitely do. If you look at like Marlin lures, for example, you're basically trolling a giant eyeball through the water. They're, you know, <laughs> like it's an eyeball in a skirt is all it is. I'm, however, sp that's like 2% of spearfishing is the eyes. It is all your body language. It's this, my wife is a gr awesome spear fisherman. And the way she describes it is just like guys at the bar. If they're standing across from the bar from you and just staring you down, staring you down, and they start walking straight at you, staring you down the entire time, <laughs> then you're staring at the wrong camera. But uh, I, I still liked it. I caught it. I caught the glimpse of it for nice. myself. So it was awesome. nice. <laughs> I am, you're gonna run away. All right, give it, give it to him one more time. Just staring him down. I. Am, <laughs> you're you're gonna run away, and it's the same thing with fish. If you're staring at them, if you're staring at them, staring at them, uh, and then you're going right at them, they're going to run away. I've, I can't say how many times I've seen people switch from a, a gun to a sling. And they're like, oh, man. At a gun, they stay 20 feet away. With a sling, they stay 10 feet away. With a camera, they come right up to me. How do they know? They know. They know. No, they don't know. You know. Yeah. And now it's your body language is saying it. The, the, what really got me going on it or paying attention to it was seeing sharks swim on the reef. If the fish know I'm a predator, they definitely know a shark is a predator. And fish won't get out of a shark's way. A shark literally has to push fish out of the way. They give the shark no respect at all. And how can the shark get that close? Why can't I get that close? Well, the shark acts like it's been there before. It's super relaxed. It's cruising super slow. The more slow and relaxed and nonchalant you can look, it's going to make up way more so than any kind of tint on your, on your mask. But this is Cressy Nano. Fits really well. I really like the teardrop, teardrop shape. I don't know which camera I should be looking at. This is right. the one that's on. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. So this is Cressy Nano. I love the teardrop, teardrop shape. Cressy kind of was the one that really uh, pushed this shape. They did a great job. Spear fishing, it's awesome. When you're on the surface, you can see uh, way wider with that teardrop. Scuba diving, it's awesome because you can really look at your BC, any gear that's on there. That teardrop shape is money. I really, really like it. Uh, this is a super low volume mask, yet it still has room for anybody with a brow like myself. Yeah. So I love this mask. Also a really popular mask too. Yeah, especially at that price point. That's pro that is the most expensive mask that we carry in the shop and it still sells really well. Yeah. Next. Next up. The Cressy Necton. Let me give him that, that close up. Or not. There it is. <laughs> Cressy Necton. Not Cressy Necton. Rife Necton. Oh, <laughs> you got me I saying. Threw you off. So that's this guy here. Um, really, probably one of our mo so I say our one of Florida Freediver's most popular masks that gets sold to women. Um, it's a very small skirt. It's a very small frame mask, pretty low profile, pretty low volume. Um, but, and I think that's the reason it made the top five best masks is it's one of the most, one of the best fitting women's masks that we've, we've come across, you know? Um, I don't know if it's the small size. It does fit a lot of guys really well. Um, For sure. and not, not necessarily just because it's smaller. You know, it seems to fit pretty much. A wide range of people. It's just if you're buying a mask for your wife or your girlfriend, you're not going to go wrong with the neck. Then. No, you're not. It's going to fit. I don't think I've ever handed that mask to a lady and not have it, not have them like it. 
And the skirt material is money. It's super, super soft. Yeah, butter. And like real thin too. Yeah. I like that mask a lot. And if you forget your mask, you can borrow hers. It's an <laughs> awesome mask. Um, it's very similar to the Omer Alien in look. In look. In look. But very different in feel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's, that's one thing. So just to address that real quick, cause that's kind of a, a thing with me. People look at all of these masks, all of these masks. <laughs> and, um, like I get a lot of customers that look at the entire wall of masks and say, these all look the same. What's the difference in these? Well, it's hard. Yes. Yeah, so if you're just looking at the physical appearance, a lot of these masks do look similar. And when you're like us and you're literally staring at them all day, every day, you know that they, none of them actually look the same. Um, but it's the fit that's different in these. So even though you might see one mask that looks similar to another, that does not mean that they fit the same at even all. Even when you see, that's true. Even when you see knockoff masks. So you'll see masks that are like clearly knocked off mm -hmm. from each other and those masks, although even even me, like looking at them, it's very hard to see the difference between them. They fit completely differently. Yeah. They're, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the original is going to fit better. It depends on your face. But they are definitely going to fit differently. Yeah. So and even, even if it's just a difference in like the grade of silicone that they use or the thickness, whatever it is, there's just, you never really know. Yeah. You see a lot of, a lot of knockoffs in the mask world. So the Rafe Nectin. Number two. Yes. Number three. Salvamar Noah Mask. Oh, let's go through um, 1995. Yep. For the mirrored, um, 95 for the normal. 95 for the normal. Exactly. So for the non-mirrored version. Yep. The, uh, the Nectin, 66.95. Pretty good price point. Pretty good price point. Yep. And it's a good quality mask. Both of those masks are actually both of them. Cressy's known for making some of the best masks out there. Um, so good yep. quality, going to last you a long time. You get what you pay for in a mask, generally. For, for sure. Uh, the Noah, seventy three ninety five dollars Salvamar Noah. I love this mask. It is one of the lowest volume, best visibility masks in the industry, according to the marketing, which is the marketing's marketing. It is the best visibility of it any It does, of if, any if mask. you put it on. And that's, so that's a comparable thing, too. Right, you can yeah, they, anybody can grab two different masks and put one on, mark like the points that your perif like the edges of your peripheral vision. I'll do it by like turning to the point where like there's a noticeable mark on the wall, like a corner of a wall, right? I'll turn my peripheral vision so I can just see that corner, see how far I can see to the other side, and make note of that. Take that mask on, staying in the same position, put the next one on. And see if there's a difference, whether it's wider or narrower. Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Anybody can do that. Go to the go to the dive shop, go to Florida Freedivers. You can use the mask wall at Florida Freedivers as a peripheral gauge. It's perfect for it. Um, anybody can do that. So try that out. Nice. Yeah. According to the literature, they actually stuck cameras inside of the inside of it and tested the the field of view. Yeah, so. measured it. They have like stats on like the actual angle as well. That's another thing to touch on with the low volume masks as well. I'm sure we've said it before, but a lot of people think that low volume masks have worse peripheral vision mm -hmm. because they're smaller lenses, yada, yada, yada. But the one thing they discount when they're, you know, considering a low volume mask is that those lenses are a lot closer to your eyes. And what happens if you have something this big that's on your eye right here? Like my glasses. Yep. You can see really wide through that because it's so close. Yeah. But as you get that farther away, even if it's a bigger area, um, your field of view narrows within that that one little... For sure. I use my glasses spec. all the time to explain that. The lenses yeah. on my glasses are, are teeny, but yeah. I have perfect peripheral vision with them. I am... All right. So, South Noah, if someone comes in and says, hey, I'm buying a mask for my friend... Get that one. Get the South Mar Noah. It, it fits everyone. It fits everyone. It's frameless, so it's got a lot of give. Um, it's it has super comfortable. A matte silicone on the inside, Ooh. which is very different from most masks. It makes it gives it a softer feel. Um, a lot of people can feel the difference between that and a and a glossy mask. I didn't pay attention to that. That's a good. That's a good point. It feels I, softer, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> it's, it's really good. 
I love this mask. I really, really like it. The next one, and my next mask. The, the Omer. The Umberto Pelizzari. I'm Omer UPM1. M1. Not the not the cheapest mask. Not the cheapest mask out there. 9195. But it's both, really And we're both a big mask, fan of that mask. As far as masks go, that's not that's not the upper end of the price range. No, dude, there's some scuba Okay. Hold on. <laughs> that mask is probably one of the most expensive masks out there. Because they make that in a carbon fiber framed version that is like hundreds of dollars. Yeah, they make a three hundred dollar carbon carbon fiber one. <laughs> that isn't this one. This one. Nor is nor does anybody in the world need that. It looks freaking cool. It does look cool. Just hydro dip it. I <laughs> am um, so I really like this mask. It is super low volume. I, but it still fits me really well. I have crazy perfect vision with it. All the right room in all the right places. Exactly. You look, it's got a little bit of a superhero vibe to it. It's got that Batman look to it. I'm not a huge, they could have rounded these corners a little bit for me nah, aesthetically. That's Momo design right there. It It is stick, stick to freaking shifter knobs. You know? <laughs> I am. It actually is designed by Momo, by the racing Momo, company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is insane. Weird. But, but uh, I... I don't know how those two companies linked up. It's like I two like it, very different things. I, the, so I think that's a little aggressive. But you know when I'm knocking the aesthetics of any dive gear? That it's pretty freaking damn good. And I'm drawing at straws to come up with something negative to say. Yeah. Because that matters very, very little to me. Does not fit everyone. It no. is not like the widest fit range, but it fits a lot of people really well, especially for how low of a volume it is. It is the best low vid. It is the best low volume fitting glass lens mask that I've <laughs> ever seen. That's so many factors. <laughs> low volume glass lenses. There you go. That I've ever seen. It is for sure, and it's. I think. Out of all five of these masks, I think that is probably the best one on the table. Yeah. I really, really like it. So going from ninety one ninety five to twenty nine ninety five. Boom, baby. Boom. The Cressy Perla. The Cressy Perla. This thing is a tank. If you don't own a Cressy Perla, tomorrow morning, go out and buy a Cressy Perla. This is the best backup mask. Give it, you know what? This mask deserves so much recognition. Just give us a nice close up on your on your camera there. Let's oh. see that thing. Look at it. Go up a little bit. Up a little bit. Oh. There it is. Oh, there we go. Just hideous. It gets it. It but gets it done. It gets it done, man. I love the eyebrow on it. The little <laughs> visor feature. What's the, uh, what was that Spanish uh, lady's uh, <laughs> unibrow? Whatever. Uh, the, the painter. Yeah. Oh, God. That does all the self portraits. I am. I will think of it in a second. But uh, yeah, definitely rocking a solid unibrow on it. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm looking it up right now. Let's see if I can beat you. Any other time, I would have been all over it. Oh, it's switching camera. Uh,. <laughs> Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Sarah, my wife, is going to freaking kill me. She's a big art nut. I am. So, the Frida Kahlo of diving masks. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it from now on. <laughs> the Frida is a is a bad, bad and bougie. Or it's actually bad and proletariat. It's super cheap. But uh, <laughs> I, am, I absolutely love this mask. If you don't have the Cressy Pearl as your backup mask, you're missing out. It is the best 30 bucks you're ever going to spend. It fits awesome. My, uh, I got a buddy, Clinton, and he freaking dives this mask super, super deep. It lasts forever. The buckles are built in. The buckles are built into the frame. What's nice about that is if your buckles break, let's say I snapped off. Show us that buckle. So here's the buckle right here. What I look for in, in my backup mask is I want everything's gone wrong. I want my backup mask to never fail. So what I look for in a mask, there we go. What I look for in a mask is that this is built in to the frame, which means that it's solid plastic. If you look in right 
here. Focus. I'm right here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but the strap comes around this and it is all one piece of plastic. This is a hard plastic loop right here. And this is just a little flopper door that grabs on the teeth of the mass strap. This breaks off. You have a rubber mass strap. You're kind of out of luck. However, if you have a neoprene Velcro mass strap, you can just put it right around this little plastic part, which is never going to break. It's not like a buckle, like let's say the Omer, where it's of all a bunch of pieces. If any one piece of this breaks, it's all kind of toast. That this all being the Cressy has a really complicated one. Yeah. So the the Cressy's got all sorts of bit and bits throw, and pieces. Throw like your hand up behind it. Get it to focus on your hand. There you go. There we go. So all sorts of bits <laughs> and pieces. It's all reversed. I'm sorry, guys. All sorts of bits and pieces. Only held on by that one little pin right there. Whereas this bad mamma jamma, it's all oh there we go it is all one piece i am that's never gonna break so you have this with a, a velcro mash strap i felt like i butchered that but it's you, all right you have that with a velcro mash strap i think the point came across you were never going to have to uh replace your mask my wife had a mars samurai which is a it's a decent women's mask i am but the buckles broke on that pretty much the next day I, it's super chintzy, but it didn't matter to her because she had a Velcro mask strap and yeah. bang, there you go. I run the Velcro strap anyway. I love your Velcro strap from a boat driving perspective. You could be three nautical miles away and I'm going to be able to see you from that strap. That this mask strap, mask strap, S's and masks just don't mix well. Yeah. Um, the mask strap I think is the most visible part of your body when you're diving the end of your snorkel. Cause those are like the only two things that are out of the water, right? Yeah. Everything else is in the water. Um, however, that mask strap has way more square inches of bright color than the tip of your snorkel does. So that's why I like it. That thing's, that thing's money, man. Yeah, absolutely money. Um, so that's all of those masks R five. You wanna, that's the five. Oh, let's switch over to action cam. Boom. There's our five right there. The Frida Kahlo. Cressy Perla. The Cressy Frida Perla. Kahlo. The Rife Necton. The Cressy Nano. The Umber Omer Umberto Pelizari UPM, UPM one. one. Uh, in plastic. We're not. We're not going three hundred dollar carbon fiber lines. I mean, if you want to go that route, go that route. You know, if you got it, you got it. That's true. Or get the plastic and then go to the Bahamas, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then the Salvamar, Noah, these two being probably Our, my top two. It, those are my top two as well. <clears throat> nice, man. My top two as well. All right. If you have the Omer Alien, throw it in the trash. Get yourself a new one. Get yourself, get yourself something better. The Ant, Omer, not to knock Omer, obviously they make both of our top pick masks yeah. out there, but the Alien has been around for so long. It's time for that thing to get updated, throw it in the trash, get it out of here. I don't want it. I don't want to see it. It does not fit you correctly. No, it's awful. And it's ugly. You look stupid in it. And you're just basic. <laughs> you basic. <laughs> All right, that's enough roasting of the alien. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode of the XL Podcast. We will see you in the next one. And as always, thank you to our sponsors, Florida Freedivers, Ballast Freediving, and teach me to free dive. Rodman, you want to throw anything in there on the on the if end? If you guys want to see anything else reviewed, I'll put it in the comment section below. Please subscribe. I any comments, like subscribe. I feel like you have to say that, right? Share. I don't share. Thumb, share. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> or tell us that we were wrong. What's your what's your favorite mask? Yeah, let us know what you dive with, why you think that's a better mask than any of these five, and uh we'll debate it. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Have a good one.